Hi, in a previous video I showed how to use Dreamweaver CS6 and XHTML to create a basic website that looks just like this. Now I'm going to do, we're going to create something very similar using Dreamweaver CS6 but we're going to focus on using HTML5. So the first thing that I do when I want to create a new website is I create a new site. I go to site, new site. We're going to call this HTML5 demo. And I usually have a place for websites, but for this specific example, I'm going to, for the demo, just create a folder called HTML5 demo on my desktop. I always create a folder called CSS and then a folder called images when I set up a new site. So then with HTML5 selected, I hit choose. And now I'm going to go to server. I'm going to hit the plus sign. And for URA, I need uh, the server that I'm using. I have to actually SFTP. I'm going to test it. Connection was successful. I'm going to hit save and save. Okay. So now I'm ready to go. So the first thing I do is I'm going to create a file new. And over here on doc type, I'm going to choose HTML5. So something that you need to know with HTML5 is it's not fully supported by all browsers out there, but it is the wave of the future. And right now, any of the most recent versions of browsers all support the basics, the main part of HTML5. The biggest issues we have are with older versions of Inner Explorer. Specifically, Inner Explorer 7 and 8 do not support it. So there are some workarounds to use JavaScript and to do different things to make it work on Internet Explorer 7.8 but for the most part if you're going to use HTML5 you have to know enough about your users to know that the majority of them if not all of them will be in the most recent version of browsers that support HTML5 with that said you can assume within six months or year more and more people are going to be on for instance Internet Explorer 9, the newest version of Firefox, Google, Chrome, Safari, etc and it's going to be good to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do file save as and I'm going to save this as index and I'm saving it in my HTML demo folder and I'm going to call this fun with Dreamweaver. I'm going to give it a title. So I'm going to go to split view and you can work with desi design view split view or code view. I tend to always do split view and so with this I'm going to give some space right between my body tag and I'm going to go to insert layout objects and I'm going to do a div with an ID of container. Just like with H XHTML a lot of people when they're using HTML5 still like to put everything in a container. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delete all this text between these two divs I'm going to give myself some space and rather than do the slow way of going insert layout objects div tag, I'm just going to type right into the, the code view over here. And I'm going to type in header because that's the new HTML5 tag. I'm going to type in nav because that's the new navigation. I'm going to type in section. And I'm going to type in footer. So there are other types of HTML5, there's a lot of aspects to HTML5, but even the main things, there's even, you can have more than one section, and then within a section you can have an article tag, and you can have what's an aside tag, which is if you want something to like float off to the right. So there are so many different things you can do, but in this case, I'm just going to delete the article tag, and I'm going to clean up my code. Apply source formatting. Okay, and so I can see all of my new HTML5 tags are within my container. That looks good. And so with this example, I'm going to now start adding my CSS. So if I click on the container and I can see it's selected, I can click this plus sign with the CSS panels. If you don't see it, make sure you have CSS styles right there. 
So I'm going to hit plus. And so in this case, I'm going to have ID container. That looks great. And I'm going to actually do a new st style file sheet. Hit OK. And I'm going to click on my CSS folder and call this master. So with the container, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to box. And I'm just going to select a width. So if you're working with, say, a 1024 width, you could give yourself some areas for margin. You could do something like, we'll say, 960. And I'm going to hit apply and OK. And so now that container is really just meant to make sure everything is in place. So now for the header, I'm going to click make sure I have header selected. I can see it done there. And so header, unlike container, is actually a new tag. So I'm just going to hit tag, make sure it's in master. And I'm going to go to background. So now header, I'm going to select header. I'm going to hit this plus sign. And it's actually a tag, so it's not a compound or an ID. I'm going to make sure master's there. And I'm going to click on block. And I'm going to do display block. Okay, And then I'm going to hit background. And I know the background I'm going to use because I've done this one before. I'm going to hit OK. So navigation, in this case, I'm going to so for navigation, I'm going to click on nav, add plus sign, change this to tag, make sure it's master CSS. CSS, that's good. Now I'm going to go to background under the color I want. And so in this one, I'm going to, it doesn't like that I have the semicolon there. So now I'm going to add a little padding, 10 pixels all the way around. And I'm going to go to type. And I'm going to just choose Arial. And for font, I'm going to choose white. I hit apply. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to actually add a background color to the whole page. So actually, I want the body tag. So if I select anywhere in here, I can click on body. And the body's a tag. CSS, that looks good. I'm going to change my background to black. Okay, so you can see that right now I did that almost prematurely. So I'm going to click on section right away, and I'm going to sections a new HTML5 tag. I'm looking for master looks good. I'm going to change my background color from my section to white, and I'm going to add 10 pixels. Hit apply. Hit OK. Alright, that's looking good. 
And now my footer, I can't see it in there, but I'm going to click down there. And I can always click over here because I can see it there in the HTML. And you have to get comfortable working back and forth from the HTML and the CSS. A clue I always do is the CSS has the pink, so it allows me to understand which are which. So let's get back on here. Footer. Hit the plus sign. Footer's a tag. It's master CSS. That looks good. So here I'm going to keep the font the same, but I'm going to choose a smaller font. We'll do a gray. And we're going to do 10 pixels as well. Hit apply. Hit OK. And just like that. And so let's say I decided that I wanted to change the footer color I could or if I wanted to change the size. So if I click on that, I just hit this pencil because I already have that rule. I go to type. I could change it to 10. And so that's the way that works. So now you have your basic page. And so this is where you would put your body text and your heading. So I'm going to click on that heading, make sure I have HTML down in the property inspector, and choose heading 1. Okay, that looks good. Navigation, I'm now going to type in home, space, I'm going to add this line as a separator, page 1, page 2, page 3. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an image that I've created as my header or my banner image. And so in this case, So in this case, I already have the image in my image folder. So I'm going to get rid of this text. And I'm going to go to insert image. I'm going to look in my image folder, and there it is. And I can show you this. That's what it looks like. OK. And I'm going to hit open and hit OK. And so now you can start seeing. Let's just go to design view. Let's do a save all. And so in this case, the image is bigger because previously I did 996 instead of 960. I think that was just a mental error on my part. But I'm going to change that to 960. In this case, that worked fine just to change it here. And actually, I'm going to undo that real quick. So in this case, why well, I can just change it in Dreamweaver the way I would is I'd lock this because I don't want it to get blurry and I'd change this to 960 and hit enter. Ideally with images, rather than having a big image and just changing the HTML, you'd actually want to go back to your graphic program and make the changes there. But so let's do a save all and let's preview. So that's a basic website using HTML5 with top navigation. Now right now it's just a single web page so to basically create the other pages I'm going to call this home. I'm going to do a file save. I'm going to do a save as. Page 1, make sure there's no spaces. I avoid capital. Do the same thing each time. Page two. File save. Save as page three. So now I have one, two, three, four different pages for this website, but none of my links are working. So I'm going to go back to my index. And go down here, the property inspector, index, made that link. I'm going to do the same thing for page one. 
Now you'd normally do something much more meaningful than having your navigation or pages be called page one, two, or three, but this is just to give you a quick understanding of how to create a site with HTML5. So now I would do a save all, and then my next steps would be to repeat the steps for each one of these. So I'm going to hit pause so you don't have to watch me do every one of these. Okay, so now I've done them all. I'm going to do a save all. And I could click on live view if I want to see it. Works best in design view. And that kind of gives you a basic idea of what it will look like. I'm going to uncheck it, but I always like to check it in a browser. So now when I click on page one, or any one of these pages, you'll notice that the navigation changes and the heading changes. So that looks great. So other things I would work on at this point would be to add some, to work on adding some styles so the links are a different color. Or I would also do things such as focus on the body font and work on the cart principles. Heading should be closer to the text that follows. So for instance, my H1 tag, I could click on that and I'm going to be less specific because this is just H1 or I could just do that. Make sure it's master and This is where I'm going to do a bottom margin of zero. Hit OK. And then I'm going to hit paragraph. OK, hit OK. And I'll do a top margin of zero. And you'll see that what that did is it just made these closer. So basic art principles. If I wanted to play with, for instance, maybe I wanted to make my headings. I'm going to change this, edit it, Verdanda. Maybe I want it more like that. I'm going to hit apply. That looks good. But I want my body text. So I'm going to do paragraph to be Arial. I can see, start seeing what it looks like, okay? So that looks good. I could also play with my links if I wanted to. So if I click on the A tag and hit OK, this is where perhaps I want it to be white. I hit Apply. I could see that, and that looks good. I could add text decoration if I wanted to. So maybe I want no underline. That looks good. And just like that, I've created a basic site using HTML5. And so you would just add text and your page adjusts. So last step is to upload this. So I'm going to, I have the files window open. If you don't, you make sure files is here selected. I hit this to expand. I'm going to connect. And so the first thing I do is I go within my public HTML folder and I create a new folder. HTML5 demo, no spaces, no capitalization, no weird symbols. I'm going to highlight these and I'm going to drag them. It's going to ask me, do I want to include dependent files? I do. And once it's done, I'm going to go back to... And the key is I have to remember exactly how I put it. What was that name of that folder? I think it was HTML5 demo. Index.html. And I forgot one little thing. Try it again. And there it is. So now the last thing I do, and I really try to do this whenever I create any website, but I especially try to focus on this when I'm using HTML5, is I try to test this in as many browsers as I can. If anything, just so I have a better idea of where my problems might lie. So right now, this is Google Chrome on a Mac. Okay, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to close that. And now I'm going to do, here's Firefox on a Mac. Once again, looks pretty good. Happy with that. 
So now I'm going to pull up, I have uh, Windows running here, and so this is Firefox on Windows XP. So overall that looks pretty good, happy with that. But see, this is what Internet Explorer looks like. And so Internet Explorer 9 is supposed to be better than previous versions and supposed to support more HTML5. But right now you can see that this is just a mess in general because right now the user has no idea what's going on here. And so this is one of the drawbacks of HTML5. There are a lot of tricks out there that people will show you of ways that you can get HTML5 to show up on older versions of Internet Explorer. You know, one that I found, and it um, is by no means foolproof, but I will show you it nonetheless, is I'm going to put in my head, I'm going to go code view, and I'm going to write under my CSS, give some space, and there's basically this little bit of code I'm going to copy, I'm going to put in here, and I'm going to save it. And before I even try to put on every one, I'm just going to see what it looks like on the other pages. And so I'm going to make sure I'm connected. Okay, I am. So, and this is going to go into HTML5 demo. Dependent, yes. And whenever you make changes, you ideally would want to go through and test every browser once again but I'm going to hit refresh and you can see that that little trick didn't do that much actually and so it still it basically you know the footer appeared and you know this little bit of the content appeared and so there's one other thing you want to always check is I'm going to minimize this is if I look at my CSS you notice I did display block on header so I'm going to actually go through and make sure I add the same thing on all of my HTML5 tags. That looks good. I'm going to save it. And what's great about external style sheet is I only have to do this once. I'm going to re-upload. Hit yes. Go back to Windows, and there you go. So you see that it still isn't perfect. My navigation actually looks a little funky, but by making sure, by adding that little bit of code, so let's revisit what we did, source code, right here. And you actually notice what I'm missing here, and this is probably why it's not showing up, is I'm missing the nav. So I'm going to copy and paste another bit here, because I'm using the nav. I'm going to now go to each one of these and add it in. Here's the last one. I'm going to save all and go back, re upload. Hit yes. Okay, now I'm going to come back and hit refresh. And just like that, a couple little tweaks, and I got it even working in our Explorer 7. At this point, you ideally would want to go through and check all the browsers again to make sure nothing you did broke everything. Looks pretty good. I think I'm good to go. So just like that, you saw how to create a basic site using HTML5, which simplifies some of the process, how to then debug or troubleshoot some issues with it not a hearing certain elements in older browsers, specifically by making sure that we added this little bit of JavaScript right in here, as well as making sure that we, in the CSS, have display block. So with that, you should be ready to go to explore HTML5 even more. Thanks.